Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Creative Amplifiers live podcast show stream type thing. How are we all? <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Yes, doing well. Yes. How is everybody today? We're very yes. Good. This How idea of everyone? actually starting the show a bit more professionals worked brilliantly. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, seamless. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have some people in the house. Marcus, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. Um, oh, very exciting. The VHS Club video podcast. Hey, Katie. How are you, Katie? Thank you so much. George, thank you so much for being here. And Neil, look at this. All of these placeholders are working beautifully. I told you it was worth doing that extra bit of practice. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Roy. Thanks for joining as well. Look at this. Got <laughs> quite a few people joining today. This is great. Yeah. Because it of our great. special guest, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to bring Dan Roth on very shortly. But just first of all, we had a couple of things that we wanted to talk about. The first was, um, and I'm sure you know this already, you may well have already entered, but there is the Ecamm Obsbot um, competition to get a tiny two. Um, I've already entered. Um, Neil, Lisa, have you entered? I haven't because I have no. one. There we are. I don't think I could I could take any more cameras in my studio, but uh, maybe I should just try before tomorrow. Tomorrow okay, is yeah, the so last day, right? I think tomorrow is the last day, and you have to go to the um, Ecamm Live Instagram account, I think, and you have to put why it is that you want to be, um, why, why you'd like one. Um, you have to have the hashtag um, LoveTiny2, I think, is the, is the hashtag, and you have to have followed Ecamm and also the old spot on Instagram as well. So um, if you haven't done that, I think you've still got a few hours. Obviously, you can't do that until you finish watching the live stream, but really do. Exactly. Um, yeah, appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much, Katie. <laughs> Yay. Thank <laughs> you, Katie. There you go. <laughs> um, one other um, thing I think we wanted to, to point out to people is that we do actually have a audio version of this podcast as well. So not only are we, you know, video in our wonderful studios but you can listen to us in the car in the gym anywhere you want really uh, as long as you have a device to play a podcast and we are on apple Podcasts, spotify everywhere i think not on youtube podcast yet but you don't need to be there we're everywhere so come and join us as well audio wise if you'd like to if you don't want to see this you can always listen to it it's far better sometimes <laughs> isn't it and the most enjoyable thing is the fact that Neil and I have both been listening to it and actually enjoying it. I was doing it on my commute when I was going to, to one of my um, work placements last week. I think, Neil, you were out sunbathing or something and listening to yours. In the, in the <laughs> Listen to it. I think Lisa said you, you were also listening I said, to it. On the way I back, actually so. had a long drive yesterday and listened to it. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this is, we do. This is great. And we thought it comes across really nicely. Bear in mind, obviously, this is very visual, but actually the way we sort of seem to have um, managed to talk a lot, which is very much like us, seems to seems to work well and comes across brilliantly just from an audio point of view as well. So we thought as we actually hadn't mentioned that in our first sort of four episodes or so, we should have mentioned that it's out there on all those normal podcast platforms. So, yes. So thanks very much for being here. Thank you to some people that we've not seen before and really do appreciate you spending the time. Please do keep the stuff going in the comments. If you have a question for Dan when we start chatting with him, do that. We can um, ask him some of those as well as we go through and towards the end of his conversation. And I think we should bring Dan on. What do you think? Yes. Absolutely. Welcome bring Dan. on our special guest today. Here we are. <laughs> hey, Dan. Hey. Thank you so Hi, much for being here. Hey everyone, speaking of the tiny two, that's the box right behind me. Um, I have a bad habit of getting it to zoom in on my face, so uh, apologies ahead of time if anybody gets too close and personal uh, on today's show. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we can we can suddenly change scenes or do something different we can do a close-up on neil or something or something you, you, oh, please no you can't talk with your hands and have a tiny two and i am i talk with my hands a lot and the first thing it does is zoom in on my nose um so <laughs> uh but yeah thank you katie for being here listen everybody i have to give a shout out if you're watching this, you're trying to figure out what to do for dinner, please go to Lisa's website, take a look at some of her videos, get some inspiration, um, some amazing Thank recipes you. and videos on there. Oh, Thank you. Very, very good. And and I couldn't agree more. And um, we were only just talking um, 
pre pre going live about <laughs> recipes and food and various things for upcoming <laughs> events, which we will keep secret yes. for now. But I'm sure we will we will share in due course and everything. So so Dan, for those people that actually may not have come across you before or actually don't know some of your background just tell us your sort of journey from how, how you sort of got into ecam how you found it and i know you've had a transition in, in your sort of professional life in the last few years well i mean my transition has been since i was a kid uh you know most people don't know that my degree is actually in journalism so i've been a creative for the bulk majority of my life uh, but when I moved from New Jersey out to California, it would kind of got put on the back end. And then um, through actual, you know, through actual pain came progress. So early on um, during the pandemic, I was a father of twin daughters, unemployed, um, no real place to go. So I decided to show up on social media for the first time and decided to do it my way. And I started producing content and really testing out different forms. Uh, and then over time, uh, I became somewhat of an expert in it. And then Gabe Leal, who I don't like to give credit to for anything, um, introduced me to Anna and Fulgens and, and from there to Ecamm. And, um, you know, I have to give a shout out to Katie because uh, everybody hears me shout out Katie all the time. Uh, one of the most loyal, incredible people that you'll ever meet. So, you know, I really joined in order to level up and I stayed because people here seem to tolerate me better than most. Um, so <laughs> that's where I've come from. And, and along the way, I've learned video editing and I've gotten a chance to work with Anna and Fulgens um, in a lot of capacities. So it's been a really special uh, experience. Yeah, love it. And and sort of take us into your sort of LinkedIn journey, as it were, because I know you've got some great, great projects on the go, but just sort of why was LinkedIn the thing that you kind of really, really sort of leaned into from from that sort of professional idea, but also what why it's sort of taken off and sort of been your mainstay? Well, at first, I, you know, uh, I'd be disrespectful if I didn't say hi to the people in the audience that have either come to see me um, or come to see the episode, please like, and, and you know, uh, ensure that you're giving some love to, to Mark, uh, Lisa, and, and somewhat Neil. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so LinkedIn, so I'm very open about the fact I'm ADHD, I'm neurodiverse, I, I deal with anxiety and depression. And when I came on the site, uh, really what wound up happening is I decided I really want to come through is exactly who I am, that there's somewhat of a bait and switch in the job market where you try to show up how other people want you to be. And I decided if I was going to push through, it was going to be, um, I don't like the term authentic, authentic, but I tried to come through authentically me. What I wound up finding was that there was a niche that I was able to fill and I created a post that generated a hundred thousand views every week, a thousand comments. Um, I was gaining roughly a thousand followers per week. And I'm a huge believer that if you have a platform, you have a responsibility. So knowing that people were viewing my profile already, I started creating content focused on mental health, focused on um, topics that most people don't discuss. And I was doing it on a site that really was not something that most people looked at. So I was one of the original people that was coming on saying, well, how can we take this environment and, and really bridge the gap between content creator, but also uh, thought leader and how you use it as a responsibility to showcase things. Um, and that's why I chose it. And as far as why I haven't gone to different platforms, you know, I've always used YouTube as a repository. I need to get better with it. But for me, being neurodiverse, it was very difficult for me to learn all the algorithms and all the idiosyncrasies with each one. So I would multipurpose my content um, on all these different sites, but without the focus and attention to detail that I did on LinkedIn. Um, so that kind of brings it full scale. Um, but then, you know, again, meeting Gabe meeting, you know, uh, Stephanie Garcia was the first person that I met from the Ecamm fam in person. She lives about half an hour down south in San Diego from me, just incredible human being, as you 
three no um and just really love the community plus to katie's credit i even got a, a mug named after me this is the dan mug which is coming back to the store soon um and it's because i was here let me grab this to show everybody i was one of the first to get this and this does nothing it can <laughs> So I can fit three of these inside the Dan mug and Katie eventually got tired of me harping on um, asking for larger mugs. Now I'm trying to do the same thing to get triangles. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you got to do is keep gre greasing that wheel and, uh, until, until you get what you need. And you know, if you need that much coffee, you need that much coffee. Uh, so I'll tell you the same thing I told Doc. I've got four and a half year old twin girls. I don't so much drink f this much coffee as I need that so that if they knock it over, it doesn't spill. Um, <laughs> so, you know, everybody looks at me and says, you just must drink so much coffee. I drink maybe two cups of coffee in a day, three, if I'm feeling really spicy. Um, but this is a protection against hot burning lap. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's a big mug. That's, that's... Um, Katie, it was funny about this is when Katie told me about this, she goes, Dan, I put up a 30 ounce mug for you. It's called the Dan mug. And I looked at it. I'm like, Katie, this is not 30 ounces. <laughs> so I took a measurement. I'm like, Katie, I, I you know, usually it's men that, um, that fake the size of things, but this is 24, not 30. Um, <laughs> so she had to, go, so she had to go back and make the edit. Um, <laughs> I'm in trouble. I'm, sorry. You, you're not in trouble. I'm, I'm going to, I want to ask you a couple of questions. So I want to know yeah. more about your news, your newsletter, um, the honest accomplice. And I saw that, um, I, what, in, what inspired you to come up with that? And what is the name? I mean, what, how did that arrive? What's funny about that is I'm putting out my next newsletter and I actually changed the name. Oh, um, but, but let me, but I'll go through the progression. So I am a firm believer. <laughs> sorry, I just saw Katie's comment. <laughs> um, so I'm a firm believer that you have to take people on a journey with you. And when I first started, I got known for recruitment. That was what my post was about that generated that large audience. So first, my newsletter was The Honest Recruiter, um, and I did a lot of talking about different trends within recruitment. But a lot of the work that I do in corporate and at home is in dealing with anti-racism, um, narrowing the gender and racial wealth gap, uh, pay equity, things like that. And one of my main topics that I talk about as a professional speaker is bridging the gap between ally uh, and accomplice. And for those that aren't familiar with the difference, and I don't want to delve too far into this because it could go into a completely different direction, is an ally is somebody that basically says, oh, I sympathize with you um, without actually doing any action. Uh, an accomplice is somebody, or a co-conspirator, if you will, is somebody that looks at a situation, sees the systems of oppression that have caused these issues, and then goes about making changes or taking risk in doing so, whether it's speaking up and speaking out and potentially alienating themselves from races or otherwise. Uh, and because of that, I, I really wanted to put a focus on that um, in the work that I was doing. Um, this is going to be a, a bit triggering, but I was asked right after the Buffalo shooting, I was actually asked to interview a gentleman by the name of Mark Talley, whose mother lost her life. And it was through the work that I was doing that I was really able to build uh, this platform, but I wasn't doing it as a podcast. I was doing it as live events because I found that with LinkedIn specifically, there was more return, more yield, a uh, higher rate of views by utilizing a live event strategy as opposed to a standard podcast, which on the platform does less than 10 people on average. Whereas if I built something up, I could generate, you know, three, five hundred, a thousand people easily. But getting back to what you were asking with the newsletter. So I was doing a lot of discussions on that. Um, 
Now, most LinkedIn experts will tell you not to change your URL. They'll tell you not to change your name very often, but again, going with progression. Uh, one of the things that I really focused on recently is, well, what is the overarching concept of everything that I do from being a parent to being a creator to everything else? Um, and it's mental health. Everything falls under it. It's an umbrella, regardless of whether it's anti-racism, regardless of whether it's women's rights, regardless of whether it's just talking about uh, anxiety or depression. So I renamed my URL, my newsletter, um, and I am in the process of building out a podcast, a monthly podcast, and it's going to be called Mental Health Motivated. Um, so the great thing about that is, like I said, with the umbrella, I could still talk about anything I want, but the overarching theme is how is this affecting you? Do you need to take that space? Do you need to have that air um, in order to continue having these conversations? I think it's super important as a content creator, and I love that you're doing this. We all change, you know, we're going <laughs> to, there's different iterations of ourselves along the way. And so to be aware of it's time to make that pivot. I don't like that word, but time to make that pivot, that change in, um, put out the content that you want to put out, but also that will benefit people who need to hear the message. So I commend you for not listening to people, you know, LinkedIn experts saying, don't do this, don't do that. And I think that's something we should all, you know, there's a certain follow your heart and follow your brain before you listen to other people, I think, um, in order to get the message out that you want. Well, here's the thing about it. And I'm not somebody that holds themselves in the highest of esteem, but there's a ton of ex people that call themselves experts. There's very few people that have done what I've done. Um, now, I don't talk about it. I don't need to. I don't need to be braggadocious. I don't need to pat myself on the back. But most LinkedIn experts can't say that they've had a post that's generated 100,000 views for nearly two years. Most LinkedIn experts can't say that they generate 7 to 10 million views per year. Most LinkedIn experts can't say that they've used influencer marketing to fund nonprofits across the world. But these are the things I do because they're important to me. And I believe in putting people in positions of opportunity with the utilization of your platform. Um, so those experts can talk all they want. Um, but going back to something that used to be said in, in, when I was in, in school, uh, scoreboard, and then you could fill in the rest of what they would say. But uh, so I, I really don't adhere to what these people are telling you because most people are telling you the sky is blue because they know if they say the sky is blue, you can't disagree with them. Okay. Unless you're colorblind like me, um, then I can. But As the kids say now, you have the receipts, like you have yeah. the stuff to back you up. That, I just pulled out the little yeah, hip thing. Better there. way to put it. <laughs> In my old um, age. Uh, yeah, and that's what that's what's interesting. I don't know what the kids say now because my four year olds are only repeating Bluey. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think I've watched anything adult in, in like three years. Um, but yeah, content creation, that's what it's all about. You, you have to, if there's not a progression, then then you plateau. Um, you know, one of the reasons I started working with Anna and Fulgens wasn't because I necessarily needed their help, but I believe in working with people that are better than you so that you re rise to their level. And Fulgens is so much better at me at putting together these uh, packages and these profiles in Ecamm and, and having the lower thirds and creating things that are so unique. I may know the strategy, but Anna and Fulgens are, are way better at that. So I'd rather team up with them and. Um, instead of doing something on my own that, that's not going to be as high quality. And it's through learning from people like Doc, from people like Neil, not so much Mark. Um, I'm, ju I'm just messing with you, Mark. I, you know. uh, Katie, <laughs> I, you know, I'm being serious, but I have to also keep my sarcastic wit. Um, that it, it helps you all the way because I would be nowhere if I, did, if I had just tried to continue doing the same thing I was doing six years ago. Um, you know, I get to work with companies across the world now. Um, 
I was a partner with Elgato. My entire studio is de- is decked out with Elgato, and it's only because I've I've learned from people. Yeah, amazing. And I think I think also it's one of the things that we've learned as a as a show as we've sort of come together since Creator Camp is that sense that we're learning from each other and we've got different skill sets and there's something there's something about the the way that we're doing it which is is amazing and and supportive in the community and the collaboration and i and i've i've experienced that even this afternoon i've been doing my own podcast i've been recording i've got the same setup same situation a few different colored lies um but it felt very different when it was just my complete responsibility and then here we are we show up we do our pre-show have a great laugh and here we are getting a chance to chat to you and uh, yeah it's a completely different feel and i think you're right the, the more the more you can be supported by other people and support other people it really is a, a, a way of great success and I think that you can, there's a lot of false negatives that come with content creation. Like, and I talk with Katie about this all the time. Um, if you see how I react in comments uh, on other people's shows, you're going to think I'm a, 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 I'm a bloody wank. I'm going to use a, a Neil term. Um, because my defense mechanism as somebody that deals with mental health issues is humor. So I will purposely you know, make comments but then you get to meet people in real life. Um, and last year, Katie and I talked about it and we talked about it this year. Well, would you want to come to the next creator camp? And by the way, this is part of the content creation, which, I, which is why I'm bringing it up. Um, I'm very adept at talking to people through this screen, but I have severe social anxiety. And I'm saying that as a professional speaker that gets paid to speak. Um, so I have a massive fear of going to something like creator camp where you have all these people around and you're almost um intimidated because you have all these people that you that you see and are doing all these great things and they may be thinking the same thing about you but because you're sort of in your own head it's it's a matter of well how do i get out of there how can i really make this the best situation uh, for me in order to learn because social anxiety is is a real thing and um you don't want those things to distract you and as a creator that's where that's one of the reasons i love this so much because like you know mary lou mandel her and i both publicly discuss this kind of thing when she's having a mental health day she goes on and she does video because that's her escape that's her ability to really rise um and feel better about herself and it's it used to be the same way for me it's a, it's changed a little bit um but this is where there's so much intersectionality with what each of us does. Um, and then you have Lala, who just makes everybody feel better. Absolutely. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about your, uh, your latest project on, on LinkedIn, if we may talk about your, your new group, um, yeah. Creator Mode. And uh, we're just obviously privileged to be part of the group and it's growing. And many people, many great people have, have already been invited and now it's a, it's an open group for people to join. Um, so what inspired you to create that? I mean, obviously we've got some messages from you today about collaboration and, and working with people and, and showing each other strengths and so on and, and showcasing that and getting together. But sort of how did you identify a need for such a community on LinkedIn? Could you talk a little bit about what inspired you to get going with Creator Mode? I'm gonna embarrass somebody for a second. Um, if you want to know what inspired it, it's Katie. Uh, but here's why. Uh, because it's a deeper story than just saying Katie. Um, when I did everything five years ago, it eventually led to a 13,000 person community that I created. And um, the group that I created was the most active group on LinkedIn. We had a 47% activity rate on 12,000 at the time. So we're talking about roughly 6,000 people that were active in a group economy that didn't really exist. Um, But as life changes, as things get heavier, uh, as demands change, it becomes really, really hard with a group that size to constantly look ahead, constantly be providing value. Um, And I got to a point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. So I reached out to a couple people and said, uh, 
and said, hey, um, I think it's time I, I transition out of this. And one of the things I've been talking with Katie about for a very long time is LinkedIn just crossed a billion people. How well, yet less than 2% are, cre are label themselves as creator or create original content. Um, how do we bridge that gap? How do we get people like Luria Petrucci and Stephanie Garcia um, and Kat Mulville and Ecamm more visibility within the platform? So I actually offered the group to Ecamm and, and Katie and Katie made a statement and she's like, if I was in that group and somebody that was completely outside of my wheelhouse took it over, how would I feel? And at that moment I realized she was right. Well, I still want to support the creators. I still want to bridge this gap. How can I do that? So in that exact moment, because I'm very seat of your pants, um, I said, well, what if we create a new group? But we're going to do this with a high level of intentionality. First thing we're going to do is we're going to invite the experts. We're going to invite companies like Elgato, like Corsair, um, like Obspy, all uh we're going all the big players and we're going to say you know what we want you to have visibility in this group but there's not going to be a time commitment um but you're going to be able to get something out of it you can offer your latest sales showcase your latest products you could do whatever you want and hopefully you yield a return at the same point for the creators i wanted to create a space where they could network where they could showcase what they're doing, gain access to opportunities. Like if they wanna be on a podcast, that they could be on a podcast, they could talk about their work. They could really build that community. But at the same time, they gain the visibility and the insight and, and the direct connection to the brands and people uh, that they love, that they really uh, want to work with. Like Laura Davidson from Shore. I was one of the first people that I talked to about it. Uh, Katie was obviously the first person I talked to about it. I have people from LinkedIn that are in there. And now we create this cohesive community that is really for the betterment of everybody and is the first of its kind. But again, I'm having to do this in pieces because I don't want to rush anything because there's going to be a learning curve for whenever you build something with such intentionality. So first I invite them in, then I go to promote it. Um, and then obviously I start letting people in. And then the hope is that as people realize that this is a place that they could come, not be judged, get what they need, but without those requirements and those stressors of, hey, you have to do this at this time, then that's gonna build. And my real goal is to say, I know there's more than 2% content creators on a 1 billion person site. So let's one, have this be, have this be the spark that encourages people to do what they want to create. But also if we could hit that 250, 300,000 person mark, let's make this be an influence to the powers that be at Microsoft at LinkedIn to really start investing in the creator economy because they started to do it three years ago and then they gave up, just straight gave up. So that's really what I'm trying to do. And then of course there is that job seeking part. So I'm bringing technology companies uh, and different things. But uh, the last thing I'll say is um, I mentioned, I tried to give away my group earlier. So why would I create this other group? It is because the hope is that if everybody's prospering, I'm not gonna need to sit there and it's a babysit everybody's going to want to be there and and be respectful in their own right and if somebody's not respectful then i boot them no questions asked all good on my end and are you planning for sort of sort of weekly meetups and things like that with either specific people in the groups or are you asking for people to actively participate by maybe posting videos or giving updates on what they're doing what's your sort of goal for sort of fostering the engagement and sort of getting people to sort of participate more in, in the group. Cause it's always difficult, right? With um, yeah. groups that have just started and people not wanting to be first to sort of speak up and things. So do have you got any thoughts around how you want to get people to start participating? So a great example is actually today. Um, 
link uh, ecamm puts out a newsletter every monday katie puts it out mm -hmm. and um, i think she'd be okay with me saying that i consult with her on the linkedin strategy and one of the things that she did in today's newsletter was she was talking about her studio or her in-home studio and mm -hmm. I said, I sent her a message. I said, Katie, that's not really going to get the greatest response within the newsletter because a newsletter is less call to action and more informational. You're going to see a lot more engagement in your standard post. I said, if you're looking to do something like that, you want to go to where those creators are. So you might want to test it out in a group like this, where you have the environment where everybody's focused on the same thing. Um, and that's what she, and that's what she did. And I'm hoping that spurs engagement. I, to be honest with you, Neil, there's going to be a strong learning curve because LinkedIn has not been known as that hub like Instagram or TikTok or YouTube for creators. So my belief is once people come in, once the companies start to see uh, the benefit of it, once the experts start to see that they can get people signed up for their intensive, the Alec Johnsons of the world, for instance, uh, the Adrian Salisbury's, then that's going to really start to create and spark conversation. But I don't have any timeline for it. Um, I really had to separate myself and say, you know, what, I've done this before with jobs, but that was more in demand. This is a different thing. So we have to reset the expectations on how long it's actually going to take. As far as meetups, here's the thing with this. It's not up to me. Um, I'm not trying to force feed anybody's hand. Would I love there to be meetups in different areas and in working in different capacities? I would absolutely love that. I truly believe in creating, uh, I don't want to use the term spheres of influence, uh, but pe like-minded people in the same geographic area can often build a, a real strong format and bridge and simply do much like what the three of you did is you built a bond and then created something new. So I definitely hope for that. But as far as meetups, um, I don't have time to begin with. So the idea of trying to do another one is unless you fit it in with like Stephanie Garcia's digital confetti, which I attend, um, I'm going to be hard pressed for it. But if there's something that somebody comes along and says, hey, Dan, you know, we could get this group together. We have opportunity to get sponsors and monetize. Well, that's a different story because now we're talking about something that could supplement that I could actually make that just a decision to say, well, this is going to benefit me and my family in the long run and go from there because we have to all be realistic. And this is something I wasn't clear on when I first started it is that trajectory of not everything you have to do for money, but you do want to have a plan in place so that you know what the potential is, where it could go and where you want to choose to go if the options exist. Yeah, absolutely. And if people are interested in getting involved in your group right now, where should they go? What what do they need to do? So anybody that's interested, first of all, you could easily find me on LinkedIn. Um, there's two Dan Roths on LinkedIn. One's the editor and chief of LinkedIn. I'm not that one. Um, <laughs> I, I probably would have tried to buy Ecamm and then give it to Katie if that was the case. Um, <laughs> and also get more larger mugs. Uh, but you could reach out to me. Um, Katie's one of the managers of the group. So is Anna. Um, so right. feel free to look out and just, you know, it's just, it's called creator mode. Um, and the funny story with that is creator mode was the first really uh, thing that LinkedIn did where four creators, where they sort of scaled it. So um, calling it creator mode was a very strategic sarcastic decision on my part um sort of letting linkedin know you know hey like you messed up um but also i'm not i am not stupid i know if people search creator mode on linkedin i'm the first that pops up pops up from an seo perspective not what they created so that was a uh, very strategic yeah I do love that. And I think also, I love the fact that as it's a, a creator group, 
the fact that there's the option and the possibility that the creativity of the people in the group may be the people that are going to give it the direction and, and give it the feel of the group like say from the inside out and i think that's like say maybe not very linked in but something which i think is going to have a really sort of positive impact but that's the way that i'm trying to take it um yes it may not be the platform right now but it's the way that i want it to go and um look with all the work that i do and i don't get very much sleep the biggest part for me is creating an inclusive space it's not about directing people to do this or directing people to do that because when you do that people don't feel like it's their own um one of the things that ecamm's done really well whether it's in the beta group or through the discord channels uh, or otherwise is making people feel like they have a hand in the decisions that are being made. And that's a really important lesson for anybody that wants to be a community builder, that wants to be a leader, because this is how you really gain the loyalty of your following um, by making them feel like they have a say. So if I were to have taken it over and say, hey, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, um, it would not get the results that I or anybody else desires. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And I think yeah, certainly from an ECAM, ECAM perspective, you know, community being so key on that and the supporting everybody and and loving the creativity that comes with it. It just, um, you know, having these different people in different camps and having someone like yourself who's like leading that way with a sort of real real expert is, is just uh is just really really key so fantastic and anything else lisa and neil that you wanted to, to cover before we uh give dan his uh or share his socials I, well, really quickly how, uh, you've come to ecamm you use it uh, how did you come to find it and how do you and in, really incorporate it into what you do game layout well, so, so you'll find this interesting lisa um so I was with StreamYard for the bulk majority of the time where I was starting off. Um, with the work that I do in anti-racism, I have a mentor, her name is uh, Future Kane, and I wanted to learn from her. And one of the big things in the work that I do is understanding when it's best to listen and when it's best to speak, because there, that's two direct different components of it. And I wanted to learn from her. She wanted to do a podcast. So I knew in order to elevate what I was doing, to the level that she was, I needed a platform that would be more suitable, more personalized, um, that would really allow us to grow. So when Gabe showed me Ecamm, I knew this was it. Um, and I got trained by India Delgado to start creating it. And I started playing around and I started attending every single week with Doc, uh, much to his chagrin. Um, I started working with Anna and Fulgens and really building things out. And, you know, this isn't natural to me. I'm somebody that goes up, stands in front of people and speaks. I'm not somebody that's going to have a ton of overlays. But what I realized from both a professional speaking level, but also a podcasting level is you don't need to be so structured, but you do need to have a sense of quality so that your social uh, proof your social awareness and your visual representation is matching what you're doing. And that's really what I focused on as I was doing it. So uh, it was through wanting to raise to the level of people around me that I could join this platform uh, and learn. And I still have a ways to go. Uh, there's a crazy amount that I would love to be able to learn how to do. Uh, but, you know, I, this is why I hang out watching people like the three of you. Um, every, every time, no matter how many touch I joke around every single show I go to, I learn. Um, it's why I hang around Mary Lou Mandel. It's why Tanya Smith is one of my heroes in life. It's why I joined digital confetti with, with Stephanie. Like I'm making the choice to spend this time with people that know better than me so that I could elevate my product. Um, behind me is like the Elgato sound, uh, is, uh, sound pads like i'm using the teleprompter and and the tiny two i didn't know any about any of this three years ago but now i could charge more of my speaking events by using elgato by using ecamm by using tiny and by having these relationships um and by and by knowing and 
being able to say that uh, I have friends like all of you that I can turn to and ask questions. So that's why I use Ecamm. Yeah, I love it. What a great, great answer. I do too. And, that's great. And, and just remind people of the group in case they, they haven't found it yet. Exactly what's the what's there? Maybe, maybe drop a link in the, in the chat uh, when, when, we finish, when we finish chatting. Yeah, I'll absolutely drop a link in, in the chat. I think if you're on LinkedIn, it's probably going to be easiest to find me. Um, and then reach out. I do have automatic approvals on for anybody in the, in the creator. It, it's funny though, like quick non sequitur yesterday on DJ's show with Kirk, Kirk was talking about when you're doing a show, you have to acknowledge everybody and you really want to engage audiences with a lot of the work that I do, but also being ADHD, if I am constantly looking at the screen, it could be very distracting. So you have to set that, those expectations and make your audience realize it's not a lack of respect that I'm paying you. It's that I want to ensure you're getting the greatest value. So if that means maybe responding to messages or comments afterwards, that's what I'm going to have to do in order to have the greatest presentation. Uh, but I do see everybody that's here. I, I, you know, I see Marcus, I see Joseph. So I will absolutely drop the links. Feel free to reach out, connect with me. I'd love you to join the group. Say hi. I created a video in there to explain exactly what the expectations are and the hopes are. Um, of the group. Um, the only thing I have to be very careful of is LinkedIn is exclusively no pod. So you, you can't go and say, Hey, I'm going to send you a message. Can you like, and do this post? So I'm not doing that. What I'll say is, uh, if you find value in the work that Lisa, Mark, Neil, Katie, Tanya does, uh, please ensure you're liking following it and that kind of thing. Uh, because that's the way that you build those relationships and, don't be so afraid to reach out and say, Hey, do you want to do something? Because that's the way the three of you wound up here. Um, and I'm envious because you're three such incredible human beings and God knows Neil has a voice that could be for audiobooks. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it all works out the way it's supposed to, by the way, you don't know this, Neil, Portugal is actually like my bucket list destination. I grew up eating Portuguese food. Um, oh, wow. The Iron Mound in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, so, like, I have to get out there at some point. <laughs> if you ever do, come on, look us up. Definitely. Love to uh, oh, meet up there. Definitely for you. Fantastic. Absolutely. Well, my, my, so, my, my final question would just be based, based on that audio book thing. Are we talking <laughs> children's <laughs> books, um, adult books? What, 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 what were you thinking when you heard that? Mills and well, Bones, I think, right? What I, what I would say is that, um, you know, you have the, uh, you have some of these actors that do a lot of the voiceover work that are getting pretty old, the Morgan Freeman's of the world. So I think there's a place coming in where Neil could, could slide right, uh, in there. Um, or he could be the sixth spice girl. I don't know. <laughs> and on I that think note, scary spice is already taken, right? So then what can you do? Very scary spice. <laughs> Old spice. Oh, That's it. Old, Old spice. spice. There you oh. go. I, I think that might be already trademarked, but that's a, yeah. <laughs> I, I, or I think it's Spain, so I may be saying this wrong, but Don Quixote spice. Uh, yeah. There you go. Done. Well, thanks so much, Dan. I'm not sure oh. how to follow that, Mark. I think it's better no. to go to the socials now. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's make sure everybody him? knows. Everybody knows how, how to get hold of Dan. There we go. We, we, I mean, Dan, you've got so many, um, so many different places they can find you. But we sort of pick these up and uh, um, give people a chance to be able to to find you in these these different areas. And thank you um, so much indeed for um, you know spending the time, being so supportive, and and all the work that you're doing for so many people within ecams, as, um, specifically, obviously, as we're part of the ecam fam. And yeah, and we're looking forward to being part of your journey and uh, and being creative with you, which I think is the the most exciting thing. And I want to thank the three of you because um, I don't often get to come on and talk about the creative process as often as I would like, because the bulk majority of my time is spent with having these hard conversations. So this was the, the, the first reason I decided to sign up to be on your show was because this is very much a breath of fresh air and fun for me um, in ways that I don't normally get to have. The only other thing I want to sort of end on is um, being a mental health advocate if you are a creator watching and you have that anxiety you, you have that depression you have that 
uh, inferiority complex, feel free to reach out and, and send me a message and I'm here to listen um, and, and talk about it because we all need that outlet uh, in order to progress and go forward. Uh, and other than that, please make sure you look up Lisa's website so that you could get some great recipes. <laughs> Amen to that. And we're <laughs> Absolutely. Neil, Neil, Neil and I are on it. Uh, I think I think we can say yeah. safely. Definitely. Say. Definitely. <laughs> and, so. Thank you for putting out that beautiful message to people because you know yeah, it is we important. all need someone Thanks to, then. Yeah. to access. Thank so thank you for that. Well, it needs to be had. I mean, we all remember when Fulgence and Anna were unfortunate victims of what they went through, and I'm not going to delve too deep into it. And people people tend to react like, oh, it's just another day. Well, it, it's not. And in order for you to really heal and, and progress, we have to have these conversations. And I want to see everybody be their best selves. And if I could play a small part in that and even just listening without even saying anything, I'm happy to do so. Fantastic. What a beautiful message, Dan. Thank you so much indeed. And yeah, we, we look forward to the next part of your journey. You're very welcome to stick around, Dan, if you, if you want to. We have quizzes fun and all kinds of stuff. So you're very welcome to stick around, but thanks a lot again for all your yeah, wonderful you so words, much. comments. I'm hanging. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. He's hanging. All right. Fantastic. So, um, thank you for everyone who's, um, who's been in the chat and going, I'm glad, glad you found it, Marcus. That's fantastic. And, um, and I think this was a really key one as well. Um, creator camp was very supportive and very welcoming and, um, yeah. It wasn't just about having a great time. We learned a lot as well, but Absolutely. I think that the, the idea of, of everyone being very at home, I think, and, the, and people got very friendly with people very quickly. And I think that's a, it's a very sort of special indictment really of, uh, of what's possible. So look at us, look at us. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> An example. And, and I think we should put, we should probably just finish this sort of little segment in the, Katie's kind of comeback. It's important that she she was doing what she thought was right, even if the actual <laughs> the actual cut came slightly different at the end. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we we did manage to sort of almost finish with some merch on the perch, didn't we? There, it's, um, Dan was showing his yeah. ecam hat. So, should we go and have a little look at uh, some of the merch on the perch that we have? Um, if you do have anything which has got an ecam logo on it if you especially if you've done um some of the latest um product which is there do send it in to us you can do it via the the link tree we'll we'll have those details come up in fact i can probably do it now can't i he says can sure. power of ecam possibly and, could uh, and um, and then do that so the magic so, make the da, magic da, da, happen da, da, there we are so you can always that. scan find it and on there we've got links to the instagram we've got instant, um, our email all of that kind of stuff and you can send us a direct message send us a, um, an email whatever you want to do send it whichever way you can but we want to sort of not only share the pictures but also share your story share what you're up to as well so yeah please do that so our first merch on the perch very nice very arty mm. this, this was yours lisa wasn't it yeah i was in an arty mood <laughs> Look at that. It's beautiful. Is that your favorite tea, by the way? Oh, look it's at that. It's one of my favorite. favorite I'm, a tea, I'm a tea one girl. Yeah. Tea oh, girl. And, okay. And when you say tea, is that tea as in what we know? Or is it. Um... Probably not, because I know that's a point of contention for some. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what you mean do, by tea, right? I mean, you know. I do loose leaf. Like, I'll do, you know, it has to yeah. steep and be the proper amount of time. So, I don't know. Maybe not. Well, well, I guess we'll find out when we're when we have the opportunity. <laughs> when you're all to together. together, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, picture number two. This is very nice. Yes. Oh, well, nice. I, 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 yes, that was one of the the gold mugs, and I thought, well, I'll I'll try and look like I'm just in the middle of doing something with the the headphones that drive me crazy. So, yeah, what better place <laughs> to put them than wrap them around a coffee cup oh, and awesome. take a picture. And, and and a way of making sure yeah. that you, you're you're in uh, you're in Dan's club as well. I mean, how many of the gold Dan's mugs club. are actually out there? Not that many, are there? I don't think so. Kate, if Katie's still around, she might be able to tell us. But it's quite it's quite an exclusive club, you know. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Dan says this is the four ounce gold mug mug made for Barbie's Playhouse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it when I was in yeah. Portugal, so he's obviously keeping uh, it hidden away. 
Oh, it's just, it's just, it's just behind me over there. It's just yeah. behind me. You know, I don't, I don't like to show things off. You know, I'm not a type of person that has all my certificates on a wall because I don't have any certificates. Okay. That's Fair why they're on the wall. Fair enough. That's right. And our okay. our third one actually has come from one of the ECAM fans. This is very exciting. This is our first yes. one. I, I, thank you. Look at this. <laughs> Oh, Love that one. Thank you so much I to Holden for sending that in. That was amazing. <laughs> it was. Wonderful. Thank you. Creativity. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, we love it. So not only a picture, but a movie style as well. So brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So is everyone ready for a quiz? I think it's quiz time, guys. It Let's do it. Time. It is quiz time. Stick give around. It, Many prizes. Give, give us a thumbs Not up really. in the chat if, um, <laughs> if if you're ready for the quiz. Um, you kind of know how it goes if you've been here before, but we've uh, we'll 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 give you our question number one. And the idea is that in the chat we would like you to put the answer to the question A, B, C, or D. And we're looking for the first person for the correct answer is really what we're after. So we're going to give you sort of thirty seconds or so. Um, and then we're going to be uh, then we're going to be ready. So, all good. Here we go. Let's go. What is the manufacturer of Glenn's new car? Is it the Tesla Model Three? Is it the Lucid Air? Is it the Rivian R One or the BMW i Seven? And the biggest question could be, um, what on earth is it <laughs> that you actually knew that was going to be the case? <laughs> how did you know that was the case where did, where did you find that information from and not, are you stalking them uh, no oh. so um, it, it was on Adrian Salisbury's interview with Glenn and Ken just a couple of weeks ago and he mentioned and actually showed a photo I think of his new car well he definitely mentioned it anyway I had to look it up so which one is it do we have any right answers in well, the audience I, I, the I see answer. a right answer the answer is oh Yes. Da, da, da. The <laughs> Yay, George. Yeah. <laughs> George, good. you were listening. Clearly, you were listening. Very good. But sadly, first of all, sorry, Roy, but that didn't quite work out for you, which is a shame because um, we know these things are, <laughs> are really good. He says, just as the, uh, is the tech just suddenly doesn't quite work. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, there it is. Oh, there oh. Go. A little sad man. <laughs> a little sad man. But indeed, <laughs> we did have our right answer. And it was George, I think, was the first one. Here we go. Thank brilliant stuff, George. You, you are George. indeed <laughs> our winner. And in the spirit of the Creative Amplifier show, you will win nothing. But there you go. It's the participation. <laughs> And taking part that counts. Exactly. We, we, we should make it clear, shouldn't we, that last week the, the prizes, because we had Katie on the show, they very kindly exactly. um, managed to do that. And, and and do let us know. If you were here and you actually got a prize, do let us know what that is and even maybe take the picture and send it in so we can... Yeah, we can because you had a choice. Even better. I'd love to see. Exactly. Yeah. You had a yeah, choice. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Question number two, Lisa, you are... Yes, yes, yes. What do Dan Roth and Ken and Glenn have in common? Is it A, the same birthday, B, a football team, C, twins, or D, birthplace? Ooh, get your right answers in now, people. Let's see. Big What's prizes happening? to be had. This oh, that's right. There's very, an answer. I keep saying very that. Good I know there's a delay. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a delay. And there's a delay. And there's, a delay. And there's still a delay. <laughs> and there's still an echo, an echo, an echo, an echo. Oh, dear. <laughs> So I wonder if anybody gets this. If you've been listening and paying attention, you should know the answer straight away. But maybe who's going to be the first? Everybody should be getting this question right. You would think so. And and and, and Dan <laughs> so brilliantly did mention it um, earlier on. So the answer exactly. is twin. So and um, I suppose this is true, as as Dan has said. Technically, Ken and Glenn don't have twins. They are twins. But I think you kind of got the idea of. Uh, of how that was going to work. So there was a common link. It was. It was. <laughs> um, so, Joseph, thank you so much for, for taking part. Aww. Sadly, it's oh. not the right one. But George is on a roll today. He is. George is the wow. man. He Gosh. is for the second time. Wow. He is our winner. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic, George. 
Fantastic, fantastic. So here we go then. Quiz question number three. All right, which of the following is not in the standard ECAM plan? So you have a pro plan and a standard plan. So is it A, web widgets, B, multi-streaming, C, 4K streaming, or D, green screen? So and look, uh, you can Google this if you want, but you got to be quick because there is a delay Seconds. and we will be looking for the right answer coming in very soon. And Mark is fastest finger first. He knows exactly when these answers are coming in. So there's no cheating people. Come on. You got George, 10 seconds. George, you are on fire today. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, if yeah. George gets three out of three, if George gets three out of three, there should be something for a three out of three, don't you think? <laughs> there should be. There should be. And Roy there should says, be. Unfortunately, there isn't, but there should be. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Maybe we can rustle Dan, up something. Dan, Ken, and Glenn are twins. Wouldn't that make them triplets? That is true. I think we might have just ended up <laughs> muddling through. So here we are. The question is, or the answer is rather, C. So well Ooh. done. And this is, the, this is the problem. We were so close. George was after his third. But oh. sadly, oh. it's time. Oh. It's a no. <laughs> Roy. Well done. You're the one with C. Congratulations. Good you are you, Roy. our winner. Bravo. Congratulations. Um, Roy, I think you've got some right in previous shows as well. So if you can remember how many, do stick that in the chat because um, we are keeping <laughs> some kind of tally. Um, Ish. Yes. Is that right? That's now? right. I think, I think yes. That's the... uh, <clears throat> we are keeping some type of tally. What? We are. What? We're supposed Trust to have a leaderboard that. at some point, but yeah, yeah, we will. We'll put up the yeah. leaderboard maybe in the next show once once I've created it and worked out who's <laughs> who's doing well. But yeah, you know, George is on a roll, so George won some last week as well. So yeah. some competition going on there. Very the good. Yeah, do do send us some of those pictures in George, and then we can we can give you a proper a proper shout out from that point of view. So definitely, our creator showcase. Yes, <laughs> George. <laughs> <laughs> but the fire is not not yeah. really not really you're here you're here in full spirit yeah two out of three ain't bad two it's out of three ain't bad it's pretty ne good next fortnight time then come back give us another go give us another go okay so our crate showcase this week neil is is video like a dad now daryl is uh, new to the Ecamm fam. So welcome, Daryl. He's participated in a couple of shows already, and he has a channel called Video Like a Dad. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, where he talks about the creative process and workflows, including video editing, recording, lighting, of course, audio. You can follow him right here. Click on Video Like a Dad for great tutorials, tips and tricks so you can learn to be videoing like a dad. And it <laughs> should be our new chant, I think. So a uh, great channel title, Daryl. I love it. Thank you for being part of the family and uh, yeah great channel go and follow him subscribe right now and you can video like a dad indeed and um if anyone's watching um either here in the chat or on the replay do just you know leave some comments let us know what your channel is make sure that we know that was the reason we wanted to create this it was that opportunity to be able to share what people are doing with you right at the start of your journey if you're a pro if you're you know somewhere in between we just want to make sure that people know more about you and i think dan was a great example today even if you come on as a guest like that to find you know the story behind the, the conversations the thought processes and how that works and so we can do that by these interviews but we can also do it just by sharing exactly what you're about and so yeah just let us know the more we can share the more we can help everybody and that's that really is why we're why we're here so in a fortnight's time our next guest is going to be yeah mr james what hicks a... indeed so james is going to be here in a fortnight's time um we're going to get some questions going. If you have anything in advance that you'd like to know about James, or if you know him and something you'd like us to cover, as again, just drop us a drop us a line. Tell us how they can do that. Remember, this is the place to go to get all of our information, so that we can you can get in touch really easily. We're happy to to take any information in any way that's most convenient for you, whether it's DMs, like I say, email, or whatever works for you. So, if you want to get involved. Here we are. So these are the three things that we're really interested in. If you want to be a guest on the show, I think are we allowed to say that we're pretty much fully booked into the summer now? Um, yes, we we are indeed. Yeah. We are, we are. But we are already planning for the autumn, and we have some new ideas. And Season new two, that we're going to do. Season two. So that's <laughs> that's going to be fun. Season already. two. So do <laughs> let us know something. 
I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's like it's summer's already here. Um, so yeah, so that's um, one of the things that you can do for the future. Um, I will see the pictures of the merch on the perch. Um, and as we mentioned, tell us about your show. Those are the things that we're really, really keen to do. If you want to get involved, as I said, Neil, you're very good at this. What, what is it? How do they nominate someone else to be a guest, even if they don't want to be the, a guest themselves? Um, well, they can they can um, click on the QR code and they can actually nominate somebody to be a guest on the show. You can send us an email as well if you'd like to nominate one of your creative friends and colleagues, people that you don't like and just want to put them on the show. You can absolutely do that just by clicking on the QR code and sending us an email. And you can get us on all the social networks, YouTube and Instagram at Creative Amplifiers. Yeah, so do yes. make sure that you... Uh... Definitely following us on on Instagram, especially so that we can keep you informed of what's going on and and all of that kind of stuff. Lisa's working very very diligently behind <laughs> the scenes while Neil and I are having fun. Um, but there there is some sort of pro I... pro work going on here as well. <laughs> we, we make a good team. We we, we make do. it all work every week or we every do. other week. Make a good yeah. team. So yeah. thanks again to Dan. Um, I'm going to go and bathe my poorly finger which i'm um, sadly was uh, it happened last yesterday in my daughter's new vanity unit so stroke makeup table stroke flat pack build that needed doing so i won't show you but i've got a, i've got a sore finger so i'm going to go and bathe that and, and look after myself um for the next week or so <laughs> to make that for the back. next week but, or so <laughs> you think i've got a bandage part. but it's really not that bad <laughs> but it's really not that bad Oh, fantastic thank you so much everybody for being here if there's anything else you want to tell us just in the last couple of minutes please stick it in the chat if not we will be back yes. in a fortnight's time do look out though for the fact we may be popping up the odd instagram live the odd um youtube short so yes don't be worried if yeah. you see us coming up at a time if not the next interview show will be in a fortnight's time that is set out for the next few weeks but yeah we're planning on giving you some great value some insights and a little bit of a uh, humor along the way as we go through so yeah. thanks so much for being here and we look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks thank you so much again to dan for all of his um fantastic insights really do appreciate it and we will see you very soon <laughs>